Guerrero and Tom Brady Skip are going to be linked together forever, just like Barry Bonds and Anderson. Des Bryant needs to walk away from either the keyboard or the phone because it's getting worse, not better. LeBron James finally participated in and won a dunk contest against 13 year olds, against seventh graders. Guerrero and Tom Brady Skip are going to be linked together forever, just like Barry Bonds and Anderson mm -hmm. will be linked together forever. Mm -hmm. And because people looking at Tom Brady like, well, hold on, wait a minute, bro. You in your late 30s, you in your 40s, winning MVPs. You're playing better in your late 30s and 40s than you did in your late 20s and 30s. How is this possible? Mm. So people like, well, wait a minute. So if Julian get popped, so what, what, what's Tom Brady doing? Skip, that's just a natural doesn't mean that it's true. Brady had answered four or five other questions yes, for four yes, or five minutes yes. before this one hit yes. him the exact wrong way. And then he concluded the interview with that. He should have just said, that's ridiculous and moved on to the next question. Correct. You don't even have to say, I don't want to discuss this anymore. You know, and I know how much Alex Guerrero has meant to Tom Brady. Yes. He has changed his life yes. by prolonging his career to levels nobody ever dreamed possible. If I'm Tom Brady, don't distance yourself. Don't say it's ridiculous. Don't be defensive. Just say, look, I've worked with Alex Guerrero for the last decade, last 15 years, and, and everything we have done is by the book, and we're, it's about flexibility. It's so good, in fact, that we wanted Julian Edelman. We want Rob Gronkowski. We want him around the Patriots. And yeah. I'm, I'm devastated for what's happening to Julian, how we're looking at him late in his career, in which he's having an unbelievable run, made that unbelievable catch in the Super Bowl. But it has nothing to do with Alex Guerrero. Instead, he gets defensive, and now we all start thinking, huh, maybe there's something there. This won't taint his legacy one bit. You mentioned Deflategate, Spygate. Have they tainted his legacy? Not at all. Uh, a little bit. He's still regarded as the GOAT by many people, or at least in the conversation yes. with Joe Montana. So to me, that can't put a stain on your legacy. If, if they're still looking at you as the GOAT, then your legacy is but, not but if he, but if he These plays, are small footnotes, I'll give you that. It would be an unfair question if Julian Edelman uh, busted for PEDs and you didn't have a clinic and he was going using the Patriot staff and people came up and said, Tom, what do you make about that? Tom could say, well, I don't know. I'm just an employee. Julian Edelman's got to take care of Julian Edelman. But now Tom Brady takes care of Julian Edelman. Dez, you couldn't separate at the end. You couldn't separate. You were blowing up team meetings. So this weekend, he's blasting Sean Lee. And by the way, he's blasting play calling. And he called Jerry Jones clueless. No. You came into this league as a wildly talented young man. And you didn't master the route tree. And you didn't really, really take coaching serious until you lost a step. And now, you're nothing but a headache. For a defensive player to be able to get an offensive player out of, out of a, off a team skip, I've never heard. Now, a quarterback has that kind of leverage that can get a defensive player off the field, obviously. But for a defensive player mm -hmm. to get, I don't see how that happens. And he's just upset, Skip, and he can't let it go. He can't mm -hmm. let it go that he's not on the Cowboys and someone has something to do with it other than his inability to make plays. I do not hate Des Bryant. I hate what happened to him last year. I'm a fan, so any fan's going to react the right. same way. I was his biggest fan in 2014. I thought he was the best receiver in football. Right. And I don't know how many times I threw up the X. Mm -hmm. And now, nobody throws up the X. No. And, and Des is still on side, which is, it's, it's a sad story to me. A lot of people are looking at it like this, Doug, saying, you know what? Dez is actually right. You might not agree with the way he did it, but in some ways they're saying he's right as far as when he calls out the play calling, when he calls out the offense. Remember at the end of last season, before the last game, there was a report that several Cowboys were questioning the way they were running the offense. So I think he actually may have saved himself a little face instead of it letting it look like they were just scapegoating him and going at him. I'm sure if you're Des Bryant, you sit there and go, wait a second, I was the face of the Dallas Cowboys. 
Romo kept getting hurt. I was here. I played through my foot. I hurt my foot. I came back as quickly as I could. Jason Witten retires, goes to Monday Night Football. He gets this, you know, hero send-off. Yeah. Sean Lee gets keeps getting hurt and comes back, and it's like he's a saint. Meanwhile, all I'm out there doing is try and battle every Sunday to catch touchdown passes, and this is how you treat me. So I, I understand the emotions of it. But, dude, you're going to go at your teammates and say that they were – it was like Brutus stabbing you in the back on the way out the door. That is a really dumb play if you don't have a contract. If we start hearing, yeah. hey, LeBron's intimidating officials. LeBron is <laughs> yelling at other kids to pass to Bronny, right? If LeBron is giving Bronny a pass on not playing any defense, not playing the right way, then I got an issue with it. But. The team won the game. And by the way, in addition to being a great experience, how intimidating is that if you're at the other well, the end other of the court? I'm surprised like, the other guys wait, were what? standing there looking. They were they just are. going about they won, doing they, and they won. By the way, they won the, the, the national championship. They yeah. won that game. They won that thing in layup lines because everybody else is like, oh, my God, we're playing against LeBron's what, kid. What? This was just so pathetically wrong <laughs> on so many levels because, first of all, his namesake son, 13-year-old LeBron James Jr., is obviously trying to make his own way in basketball. He's trying to make a name for himself. And all of a sudden, his father is in their layup line doing contest dunks. Yeah. Not just doing lay shooting layups yeah. like the kids are shooting. Yeah. He's doing contest dunks. LeBron James just shows up at the game, sits down in the bleachers, he's taking attention away from Bronny and the rest of the kids. He's that big where just being there is going to take attention away from him. And then you see from the videos that are out there how animated he gets. Being animated is going to take attention away from it. Getting it with the team in the huddle and kind of coaching them up, that's going to take attention. We could sit there and nitpick and say, oh, he needs to just sit down, be quiet, give the attention to the kids. He's just being who he is, having fun with them. As long as Bronny's cool with it, as long as Bronny's not at home like, Dad, you know, why don't you? Then I'm cool with it.